In 2011, the Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded for the discovery of the accelerating expansion of the universe through observations of distant supernovae that's usually attributed to dark energy. In a paper that just appeared, a group of astrophysicists from the University of Canterbury, New Zealand, questions the Nobel Prize winning finding. The discovery that our universe is not only expanding, but that the expansion is speeding up has no simple explanation. There is no normal type of energy or matter that can make it happen. It requires a substance with negative pressure, a property that we've never otherwise observed that indeed we have difficulties even interpreting. Physicists have just called whatever is causing this accelerated expansion dark energy. The simplest type of dark energy is one that's constant both in space and in time. It's then called the cosmological constant, usually denoted lambda. It's become one of the key parameters in the standard model of cosmology, the lambda CDM model, where CDM stands for cold dark matter. The authors of the new paper boldly assert that this is just the wrong model for the universe and that the evidence requires a foundational change to cosmological model. They say that if one uses the correct model, we do not need dark energy at all, not even in form of a cosmological constant. Their argument goes like this. Because there is a lot of matter in the universe, in practice we can't do calculations with the exact distribution of stars and galaxies that we observe. Observe. There are just too many. Therefore, for lambda CDM, we make a big simplification. We say that if we average over sufficiently large distances, then stars and galaxies have the same distribution everywhere. This idea is called the cosmological principle. It gives rise to the lambda CDM model that requires dark energy. But strictly speaking, this model is, of course, wrong. Galaxies and galaxy clusters are not uniformly distributed. Instead, it has patterns with many galaxies in them, such as the one that we find ourselves in, but then there are big voids in between. It's not uniform, but more like an expanding sourdough starter. If you can imagine a sourdough starter that's several billion light years wide and made of galaxies. This is what the authors of the new paper looked at. A universe that has matter-filled regions like our own and voids. And all of these regions do their own thing. They push and pull on each other. The authors call it the timescape model because time runs slightly differently in each of these regions, but I think they should have gone with sourdough. Because I'm sure that after you've forgotten everything I told you today, you'll still remember the sourdough. They say that the idea that the universe undergoes an accelerated expansion as a whole is a misinterpretation of what we observe in our vicinity. It's much like that what you observe in your home city may be a poor description for what happens in the world on average. But if we're careful and use the timescape model, we can then reconcile the supernovae observations with a normally expanded universe without the need for dark energy. To reach this conclusion, the group compared how well the Lambda CDM model and the Timescape model fit to a catalogue of supernovae observations. The authors use a Bayesian analysis, which quantifies the probability of a model to be correct, and find very strong to strong evidence for the Timescape model in the low redshift regime that's in our vicinity. This agrees with earlier findings, which have built up for some time, that draw the cosmological principle which underlies lambda CDM and without the discovery of dark energy into question. For several decades now, astrophysicists have found structures in the universe that are too large to be compatible with the cosmological principle. Since 2003, astrophysicists have known the Great Wall, a collection of galaxies about a billion light years away from us that extends over 1.5 billion light years. Then there is the huge quasar group, which spans 4 billion light years, and also the recently discovered Big Ring that spans a billion light years. According to Lambda CDM, these large structures should not exist. And yet, they do. By the way, this video comes with a quiz that will help you remember what we talked about. What are we to make of this? While I'm sympathetic to the idea of the timescape universe and think it might well be correct, 
I also think it's too early to declare the end of dark energy. For one thing, analyses like the one in the new paper depend a lot on their assumptions and the entirety of data used, and I'd not be surprised if soon another group claims that Lambda CDM is superior after all. Another problem I see with the Timescape model is that even though the equations which they use in the new paper have the same number of parameters as Lambda CDM, the full model is significantly more complicated than Lambda CDM. Using the model would require a steep learning curve for astrophysicists, and that makes me suspect that its adoption will be slow. I'm not saying that this is good, I'm just saying it's what I expect, not least because the authors made a similar claim already seven years ago and no one paid much attention to that either. As they say, all models are wrong, but some are useful, and whatever your misgivings are about dark energy, it certainly has proved to be useful for explaining our observations. And also, you have to admit that it just sounds very cool. To me, science is more than a profession. It's a way to understand the world and how to solve problems. This is why I'm happy to work together with Brilliant, whose mission is to help you learn science in the easiest and most engaging way possible. All courses on Brilliant have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. What you see here is from their data science courses, which they just released. They all use real-world examples like what it means to go viral on X. Brilliant covers a large variety of topics in science, computer science and maths, from general scientific thinking to dedicated courses on algebra or large language models, just what I'm interested in. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle, and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days. And you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.